The call is meeting to order at 6.30. Christian? Here. Jesse? Here. Bowles? Here. Oster? Here. Sounder? Whittington? Here. Halliday? All right. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Make that motion. Awesome work. Motion by Whittington, supported by Oster. All those in favor of the raise right hand. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Five to zero. <coughs> Looking for a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll make that motion. Motion by Jeske. Support. Supported by Bowles. All those in favor of the raise right hand. Aye. 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 I'm sorry. I had a question. Sure. Didn't we see a uh, hire for another? Yes, it is an action item. Right. Right. It's action. Yep. Okay, sorry. Thank you. All right. I then. I I I All those in favor of the race right hand. I then. All right. All right. Motion carries five to zero. Student and staff recognition. All right. I have two. First, just a big thanks to Leanna uh, for all her work. We're about to see a I know I have a presentation. I know she came in and did a, did a lot of process development, a lot of cleanup from the prior year, and just things are really, really going well, and we're going to see that in greater detail, so thank you very much. Second big thank you goes out to George Rieger and Jeff Raby uh, from DM Burr. Last week we had water coming up through uh, both locker room floors and the boiler room, just coming up through the floor drains while we had a volleyball game going on. And, uh, you know, we just redid the gym floor, so that as it was creeping, it was getting scary, uh, but they jumped right into action. They were able to suck the water up and then George was able to clear the drain. So no damage, uh, just a little bit, of, little bit of rapid heartbeat. So thanks to the guys, because they both were not here. They came back late that night and got it done. So um, that's my recognition. Okay, public comment. Audit presentation. Even, sir. Feels like we just did this a few months ago. Well, not long ago. I know. I know. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. I'm Doug Peter with Raymond, and we did the audit for the district for uh, June 30, 2023. Um, and I'd like to start off and just reiterate, reiterate what Ben said. Is Leanna did a nice job this year. Uh, lots of improvements from last year. I don't remember last year we had some significant difficulties through the audit process. Did not have them this year. So um, kudos to Leanna to, for jumping in here and, and doing a good job of getting things put together. Um, I gave you three documents in front of you. The first one is the big document is full audit report. Okay. The second document is on our letterhead. Um, our professional standards require us to have uh, certain communications with the board, and that's what's included in here. So it's a standard document that, um, that goes with every audit. And then the third item is the PowerPoint, which is also up on the screen. Uh, and that's just going to summarize both those documents. So I will start off with we issue what's called an unmodified opinion. Okay? So that means the financial statements are fairly presented in accordance with generally accepted kind principles. It's basically a clean opinion, the same opinion you've received over the years. We'll look at the general fund to start with. So this is the main operating fund of the district. It had an ending fund balance of $4,775,000. That increased from the prior year of $1.9 million. So a future slide, or a couple of future slides, we'll look at what created that increase. The ending fund, ending fund balance is approximately 29% of one year's expenditures. So one way to tell how healthy a general fund is, is how long could it go if, if no money ever comes in the door again, okay? So you've got 29, you can make it about a third of the year. And that's not really the important part. The important part is you have reserves, right? And that if you have a disruption in a revenue stream or a delay in getting some revenue, you have that extra money to cover that. That did increase about 9% year over year. Um, and again, we'll look at that on a future slide as well. But the MSBO, the Michigan School of Business Officer Association, has put out a recommendation that the general fund should be between 15 and 20 percent. So last year, you were right about that 20 percent mark. This year, you're a little bit higher, and I will explain why in a minute. 
So this one, I apologize for the people on the screen, it's kind of a small chart, but this looks at the general fund expenditures and puts them into the buckets of the different functions of the district. Uh, basic programs, added needs, administration, that type of thing. As you can see there, the 38% the of the largest blue is your basic programs, that's your instruction and support and that type of thing. So similar to any other school district you would see. The next slide, there we go. Or I can't get it. <laughs> <coughs> there we go, I just need to figure it. <laughs> uh, take the same bucket of expenses, and now we're just going to put them in, in different presentations. So it's still general fund expenditures for the year, broken down between salaries, the blue, the benefits, and the orange, and the other expenditures. So as you can tell, the blue and the orange of salaries and benefits as a school district that's your largest by far uh, expenditure category. Your district's about 73% of total general fund expenditures goes to those buckets and that is very consistent with other districts as well. Um, for a trend of general fund revenues, a three year trend, you can see 2021 about 15.2 million, 2022 went to 15.7, and then a large jump in 2023 to just over $18 million. And this is part of why your general fund fund balance went up, is the district utilized a bunch of ESSER funds, so COVID funding from the federal government, that basically um, replaced some, a lot of expenditures that would have been covered by other general fund revenue sources. So that's why you see the, the fund balance increase so much, because you have this revenue stream that you utilize this year. Just keep in mind, I don't think the government's sending out any more COVID funds right now, but who knows. But as of right now, there's no more coming. So you can't rely on this as a steady stream, but it is a nice um, benefit while it is there available to you. <laughs> Thank you. <Thanks>, turn. <laughs> uh, the expenditures, similar trend. Uh, 2021 was 13.8 million. 2022 is just under 14 million and then jumped to 16.3 in 2023. So again, the COVID funding was spent, went towards a lot of different things, some projects around the building as well as some other general uh, costs. So a three year trend for the general fund fund balance. In 2021, you can see on the left hand side there was just over a million dollars. 2022 went up to 2.8 and now you're in 2023 at 4.7. If you remember back in the 1920-21 time frame, this district was doing some re very significant restructuring and you've been able to bring that fund balance back up to a, a nice stable balance. So now if we look at uh, the general fund revenues, what you expected to come in, which is your budget, to what actually came in would be the actual receipts for the year broken into three main categories, your local sources, so the main part here is property taxes, your state sources, this is your state aid per pupil uh, money that you get, as well as um, grants and stuff from the state, so two different uh, funding sources, and then your federal sources, and like I said, this is mostly ESSER funds this year, the largest portion of this was the ESSER funds. Very close to what you expected to come in, total revenues about $94,000, um, over budget, so a pretty close estimate of what you thought was going to happen. Same type of information for the general fund expenditures broken into the main functions, the instruction, supporting, followed by 40, supporting services, capital outlay, and others. So again, this capital outlay, 1.6 million, I, I believe most of that or all of that was covered with your ESSER funds, uh, made some uh, improvements to the district and that type of thing. So you're under budget about $380,000 uh, in your expenditures. Next is the MIPSERS pension. So the, your district, as well as all the other districts in Michigan, participate in this statewide program for retirement for your employees. This is a um, nine-year history here of what that has done over the years. Now, this is measured on the state's fiscal year end, which is September 30th. So this is as of September 30th, 2022. Um, you know it's reported in your June 30, 2023 audit report. So you can see that the liability took a pretty significant increase in 2023. It's up to just over $23 million from 15.8 last year. 
So the state hires an actuary to actually do this calculation. They look at the whole plan, they figure out what portion belongs to each district, what the total liability is going to be different based on the different actuarial assumptions. One of the largest assumptions that makes um, a big difference in this, which you're seeing here, is what the market stock market is doing. So if you remember, the, 20, the 2022 column here is September 30, 2021. At the end of 2021, the stock market was booming, right? It was doing really well. And that's why you sit, see, saw your liability come down to about 15.8 million for your 2022 fiscal year. Now we'll jump forward one year, at the end of 2022, stock market was not doing so well. So that's why you see the liability jump back up again. It reminds you, this is just one point in time. So if you look at this today, which we don't have that information available, but if you were, the stock market has continued to go up from September of 2022. So I'd expect to see that liability coming back down again and go up throughout the year. And who knows where you come September of this year. The stock market was better than last year, but not as, what, as, good, as good as it was in 2021. So uh, very dependent on what the stock market is doing, what assumptions MIPSERS decides to use to do the calculation as well. The next one is the retiree health care. This is the same type of information, measured the same way, September 30, 2022. Uh, the liability for your district was $1,259,000, up from $941,000. So again, you see some pretty significant decreases over the year. The, the, um, the MIPSERS has changed their assumptions based on what they expect healthcare cost trends to do, what based on what has actually happened. So you see that has come down significantly as it has in every district. Um, and that's, uh, that's the reason for that, is the change in assumptions, the stock market, that type of thing. So the next part is what's called a single audit, and the federal government requires any entity that receives and expends more than $750,000 in federal awards in a year to have what's called a single audit done. This varies from the financial statement audit I just talked about a little bit, where this looks at compliance. So the federal government says, I'll give you money, you have to spend it this way. These are the criteria, this is the structure you have to spend it in. So the federal government wants to know that you did that, so they require a single audit which has been done for the district over the years. Um, and it's only related to the federal awards. So the district expended uh, $4.9 million in federal awards. Uh, the Education Stabilization Fund, or the ESSER grant, you may know it by, uh, was $2.3 million. And that was the program that we audited this year for the federal awards. So um, we did issue, again, what's called an unmodified opinion on this. This is on compliance. So the district complied in all respects related to the compliance around the federal awards, and we didn't have any findings or question costs related to the program. So another clean opinion on the compliance of the federal award expenditures. Then the last item is, we did have one item that we noted. We look at internal control um, to make sure the district has the appropriate checks and balances in place, and we did identify you know, the small staff that's here that it's hard to segregate all the duties, hard to get all the reviews in. But ideally what we want to see is somebody's preparing something and somebody else is reviewing it, right? So somebody can't do all parts of the same cycle. Just gives you the extra checks and balances to ensure the double check, to ensure things are done and done correctly. Um, so we've got some suggestions here, some items we found and some suggestions of what can be done to help improve that process. Um, but other than that, like I said, at the beginning, the audit went very smoothly this year. And um, yeah, so that's all I have for you. If there's questions or anything you'd like to look at specifically in the audit report, I'm happy to do that. to move into closed session for the purpose of student discipline hearing for student number 2023-2402 under the Open Meetings Act, Section 8B. I'll make that motion. Motion by Jeske, supported by Oster. 
Local? Bowles? Yes. Sauter? Halliday? Whittington? Yes. Jeske? Yes. Christian? Yes. Poster? Yes. Motion carries. Five to zero. We return to open session at 7.59. Looking for a motion to approve closed session meeting minutes. I'll make that motion. Motion by Whittington. Support. Supported by Hobbles. All those in favor with a raise right hand. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Five to zero. <clears throat> Superintendent's report. All right. Um, Quick unofficial count information this week. Uh, uh, our annual count day went, well, don't point backwards, went well. Um, we had great, uh, great attendance district wide on count day. Um, unofficially, we're showing 552 students at Collins, 510 in this building, and about 90 to 100 uh, attending at Community Ed. Uh, Leanne and I built this years 23 24 budget on a presumption that we would be down 15 students so if the unofficial numbers i just shared uh hold uh, we will be up about five or at least <coughs> flat. there's some variability with some of the folks still enrolling uh in the online program um, but as far as like when we think about the financial picture um, anything better than a loss of 15 students is uh, is a win that's a positive budget impact so I am pretty confident we will come out on the plus side of that equation so uh, we won't know this until November because we're still having to you know to count the folks that were absent but you know I'm really also hopeful that the summer's marketing efforts uh, as well as the new champions child care at Collins uh, have helped and will continue to help build a positive enrollment trend um, I want to thank uh, Diane Nelson, Rhonda Fawcett, and Heather Mara from Rotary. Uh, we are partnering together. Uh, they are writing a Rotary grant uh, to help provide the district one more portable AED. Uh, so the Rotary is asking for up to 2,500 to get one more of these. We currently have one. We have them in all our buildings. We have one uh, for the athletic events, but sometimes we have events back, you know, baseball, softball, track. So you know, you don't really know where you, you need it all the time. So it's gonna be nice to have two, uh, and they're portable. Uh, we will mount the, the case in the concession stand when it's not uh, being transported around. Um, looking forward to that. Um, I wrote a letter of support for that today, and I meet with Heather Morrow tomorrow to sign my part. So uh, wishing the Rotary uh, the best of luck on that. Um, later in the agenda tonight, you will uh, see the Altria settlement uh, proposal. Um, this settlement offer of just over 2500 is a settlement amount that they are proposing to pay our district and many other districts our size to settle the class action lawsuit. Um, the lawyers that we met with in the Zoom call said if your board accepts the anticipated arrival of that payment will be sometime early spring. Um, this week's homecoming week, so we're off to a great start with all the decorations, so Jeff, thank you, and thanks to everyone in the Command of Parks and all of our folks who came in over the weekend to get the decorations going. The green and white are up and down the halls, and the balloons are everywhere. Um, we've got the parade on Friday, and then the football game Friday evening, and homecoming on Saturday, so we're off to a good start, and with the exception of the cold weather, although it was cold last year, too, wasn't it? Uh -huh. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess it's homecoming week. That's when- I feel like it's like the last one every when, year. That's when the weather changes. Um, I had a, I had, a uh, had a paragraph written here for the audit, but we just witnessed that. Um, I just will say thanks again, Leanna, and um, appreciated uh, Doug Dieter being here to go over the highlights and the positive trends. It's nice to be in a better position than we projected with um, with a strong fund balance and, a, and an improving uh, financial picture. Uh, it is cooler, and so the good news there is uh, George and I met with the. Uh, the folks from Johnson and Wood today, they were doing the last pressure testing on the boilers in this building. Uh, the electricians were wiring in the transformer, finishing that up, and they should be ready to fire tomorrow. So right in time for the cooler weather. Uh, Collins is a few days behind. They're still, they still have to weld on the boiler stacks. The boilers are done, everything's done, but because they had to remove the old rusted boiler stacks, 
Um, the new ones are coming in. They were shipped out of Canada on Friday. So as soon as they get here, they'll weld those on and then it's safe to start their boilers as well. The boiler issue Collins though is only the lower. The upper L is running and heating. That boiler replacement was just for the lower. So um, hopefully uh, it's right around the corner. Um, and then finally, uh, later this week, I will be sending out information to all of our parents and staff, reminding them about the importance of voting on November 7th. Uh, that is when the district is asking our voters to renew the operational millage. Um, and this will levy about $9 million from our non-homestead uh, families and business owners. So just as a reminder to the community, this is our single largest uh, infusion of, of money for, for our budget to operate the district. And homeowners and renters here in Hope Lake Community Schools do not pay this millage. That is my opinion. All right, anybody have any questions? All right, <clears throat> move on to action items. Action outcome determination after student discipline hearing. I make a motion that student 2023-2402 be expelled until the end of the 23-24 school year in order to return in September of 2024. The student will need to attend a reinstatement hearing and demonstrate successful completion of the academic, social, and emotional supports provided. I'll make that motion. Motion by Whittington. I'll support it. Supported by Oster. Roll call. Bowles? Yes. Halliday? Jeske? Yes. Oster? Yes. Souter? Whittington? Yes. Christian? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Looking for a motion to approve top cat sales quote for Teagern football jerseys in the amount of $5,073 from the general fund. Um, can we have any questions or comments on this before yep. we move? After, after motion, motion support, one yeah. second. I'll make the motion. Motion by Jeske. I'll support. Discussion? Um, so my question, I did talk to Mr. Williams about it a little bit. The thing that was confusing to me is that these are jerseys that we already have and we've had for the entire season. So I guess my question is, if this was something the board was supposed to approve, would, wouldn't that have been approved back in August or whatever before they were purchased? And we haven't paid the money yet. He made that clear that it was it's basically a, like a purchase order. Um, but still, I mean, we've been in possession of the jerseys this whole time, so we, it's a bill we owe. Um, so I guess my question is just why would it be on the agenda in October when we've had them since August? That's a very good question. And it's interesting that some vendors um, athletic wear, uh, equipment, uniforms, fundraisers will do delayed billing. So if you put in an order and they know they have to get product to you, in this case it was to start a football season, they're going to get you the product up front knowing that the district made a commitment to go with an Adidas uniform vendor. And so TopCat is actually an Adidas right. subsidiary. So by going with Adidas, some districts go with Under Armour or go with Nike, you get global discounts on all of your your uniform purchases for all your teams, and then you also get uh, additional discounts for if it's coaches, polos, or if you're buying ball caps, or doing other fundraisers. So they'll do what's called delayed billing. And so in this case, the product needed to be here, and they are a big enough operation, and they know that we're gonna be good for the money, especially since half of this was already essentially fundraised uh, sitting in the student activity account. So. Uh, some vendors, though, say no, we won't ship, you know, until it's a purchase order and it's approved on, on a board agenda. Adidas does delayed billing and, and ships in advance all the time. Um, sure, I just, my concern yeah. is just the fact that we're obviously obligated to pay it at this point before right. it was actually voted on. Right. So, I, the, I, unless I'm missing something, I guess I would just like to see it put on an agenda before the purchase agreement was made so that the board's actually voting on whether or not we're going to be making the purchase? I, I understand, but in order to do that, I would have to have the amount from Adidas, and I didn't. They didn't so, have an estimate? No, I mean, I, or anything. you can't approve an estimate. So, um, you know, we, we can certainly reiterate, and if, if it's the wish of the board to say in the future, um, you know, in, a, in an example like this, 
I could report on it. Like I could say, hey, by the way, you know, we anticipate buying uniforms for export next season. Um, you know, they're willing to ship. They may ship before the, the bill. Is that okay, or do you want you want to wait? If we wait, we just start the season with old uniforms. Well, sure. I, I, and, and I would have no that. problem approving yeah. it. That is yeah. certainly not my thing. I just, to me, it seems like, what are we voting on then, I guess? You know what I'm saying? Because it's the money hasn't left our account, but it's definitely has to, it has to be paid. Mm -hmm. And so this is not dissimilar to, um, you know, the, the, it, it works one of two ways. When we order from, let's say, Trafera, we buy 100 Chromebooks. Um, depending on who you're ordering from, they're going to want that PO approved before they ship. Right. But that's not always the case. Sometimes they'll just say, you know what, we're going to send you a PO, and because we know shipping delays you know, take place, we're going to go ahead and start shipping before it's hit your board agenda. Some, some vendors are willing to do that, and they're taking a gamble, because if the board, for whatever reason, voted it down, we're playing football in these, in these uniforms. And, but I'm assuming they would come for the payment. They, oh. I don't think they would just say, oh, sure. well, shoot, we don't get paid. No, you know, but I mean, we couldn't pay them until you approved it. I mean, so that's ultimately how it works. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, your, your point's well made, and always we try to make sure um, when we can that we have not made a payment without board approval because um, we don't want to do that. You know, we want to be, be cognizant of this. And this is over that five hundred or sorry five thousand dollar threshold that I could manage. If it, if it was right. two thousand, sure. I could say you know what you know this operates. So in general, the way this works, when the board approves a budget, which you did, you all approved the budget. I can operate independent of you up to five thousand. Right. So, we change that recently right. with the number one. Right. So if we need to get something here, I can just say you know what I have I have an approved annual budget. I have as a superintendent discretion to make this work. I'm going to make this work. But as soon as it goes over 5,000, I can't, and you officially do have to then interact on it. So, I don't know, I don't know what I, that answer. It, it does, it's just okay. the weird thing to me is I'm not really sure what we're voting on, because the money obviously has to be given to them because we are in possession of the product. You're, you're just voting the pay the bill. Okay. Any other discussion? Um, yeah, I, I agree with that. that your thought process in terms of the advance um, and, and maybe that's something we need to look at in terms of the superintendent's discretion then. Mm -hmm. If it turns out that we need to get football jerseys and we've only given the superintendent $5,000 to work with, well, we're entrusting him with a budget that's far far greater than that sure. and maybe the board needs to then look at our spending uh, authorities. Especially for situations yeah. like this. I, mean, I, have, yeah. I would have absolutely zero problem with yeah. Approving that. It just right. seemed weird the timeline for me. Yeah. Okay. Any more discussion? All right, I've seen none. Roll call. Bowles? Yes. Sauter? Whittington? Yes. Halliday? Jeske? Yes. Christian? Yes. Oster? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Looking for a motion to approve Top Cat sales quote for white football jerseys in the amount of $5,073 from the student activity account. I'll make that motion. Motion by Oster. Support. Supported by Bowles. Discussion? Seeing none. Roll call. Oster? Yes. Jeske? Yes. Christian? Yes. Halliday? Whittington? Yes. Sauter? Bowles? Yes. Motion carries. Five, zero. Looking for a motion to approve the recommendation to hire Lauren Souter as the interim girls JV volleyball coach for the amount of $1,405.27. I'll make that motion. Motion by Jeske. I'll support. Uh, discussion? Uh, we are hiring an interim girls volleyball coach. Yes, yeah, that was just we, my question, interim. We are hiring an interim to fulfill, uh, the best of my understanding is to fulfill the season after departure, and then, you know, when we have a full season ahead of us, we'll, we'll then post and hire. And, and, you know, typically if you're an interim and you do a nice job, you know, then excellent. We hope you want the, the regular job. Um, I'm not sure, I don't want to speak for it, but I'm not sure that that would be the case here, but we'll see how it works. I do know that she has a job a little bit of a drive away, mm -hmm. and so was able to fulfill the interim duty. So 
they're excited she's able to you know help get us through the season um, and we'll see uh, we'll see how it goes okay any other questions all right roll call Christian yes Whittington yes Sounder Oster yes Jeske yes Halliday Bowles yes all right motion carries five to zero looking for a motion to adopt the Altria settlement resolution Made that motion. Motion by Whittington. Uh, support. Supported by Jeske. Discussion? Discussion? Seeing none. Roll call. Souter. Bowles. Yes. Whittington. Yes. Halliday. Christian. Yes. Jeske. Yes. Oster. Yes. Motion carries by zero. Discussion? Uh, I just, I, I have a quick comment. Um, just over the last several months and the start of the school year, it's been really apparent to me that we have the right administration in the right places, whether it be the principals, assistant principals, financial. Um, things are looking great for our district and they deserve a lot of credit. So keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you guys. Any other discussions? I just have a quick reminder that a what are we calling it? Right survey. Survey. <laughs> <laughs> we sent out to everybody. We only had four responses. They are anonymous. If you could get those back so we can prepare for the next board retreat, that would be super helpful. On that on the topic of that retreat, I'm looking at the December board meeting. Uh, so if we look ahead at the regularly scheduled board meetings, I'll probably present my self eval and, and information in November. We'll do the annual evaluation in December. Um, that is typically facilitated by um, somebody like Scott Morell or somebody from MASB. Um, that does not have to be the day of the retreat. I'm actually suggesting that's not on the same day. It's probably a good idea if you're going to do a three hour retreat to Saturday morning or a different evening or just somewhere where that's the only thing you're doing. Um, but uh, to help with that, I think the survey would be helpful, but also would, would help me when I work with that facilitator to say, the board would like to work on you know, looking at the next iteration of the strategic plan, or the board would like to work on this, whatever those things that come out of that survey. So if you are having technical um, challenges or if the link doesn't work, reach out to Kim because um, I don't I don't you know I know four people have done it but I because it's anonymous I can't tell so on that note I think that we need to check into superintendent evaluation training for the two new board members which would be Jen and Ashley I believe that has to be completed before they can participate in superintendent evaluation I know I know what yeah I know I, Maybe not. I I know Scott. I, I wasn't one hundred percent sure yeah. that counted the last time yeah. because he, they right. came in and helped us yeah. set it up. I'm not sure right. if they still need to complete the actual training, the actual training. to participate in evaluation. I know I've I've heard Scott and others say they can do it parallel to the like the mm -hmm. process. Right. Um, but also if there's a you know an online just to, just to look at the tool and yep. go through it. That so sure we, have that. we can look into that. Figure it out. All right. Looking ahead at the board calendar, does anybody have any questions? Any events? Do we have any kind of a tentative date for the board retreat? Then are you looking at December for the retreat? Is that what you're saying? Or it does. It doesn't yeah. have. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. It doesn't have to be December. I just want to start December gathering information. December, December, December gets pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, I much prefer January. January is usually yeah. a good time. Mm -hmm. And I think we have done them. I think that we have. Yeah, yeah we have chosen to go in January. Yep. Okay. Any other questions, concerns, comments? No? Nope. 818, we are adjourned. Thank you.